Hi, welcome. I'm Loretta. Today, I wanted to, to just briefly, briefly talk about a subject and the word, the word I want to talk about is sacred. And there's like about three different interpretations of what sacred means when I check the dictionary. One of them is to make or declare holy. One is to dedicate or devote exclusively to a single use or person. And one is worthy of respect and venerable. And the reason I bring up this word is because I would like to really introduce the concept of thinking about your body and who you are as a sacred being. And what I mean by that, we'll take that it's just the one, the meaning, well, we're gonna make it or declare it holy. You can do that or not. Um, my interpretation for what I'd like to do is that as a single person, as a single use, as someone worthy of respect and venerable, that counts for sacred. And the way to approach life for me, but yoga especially, is to remember that yoginis treat the body as a sick, as, as a complete sacred, holy being. And so when we're, what we're doing is we're working our breath, we're working our mind, we're working our body. And don't forget, we're working our being, our energy, who we truly are. And each of us is individually and unique. So that means that we've been individually, uniquely assigned a body, which is sacred. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I just wanted to mention it because for me, it seems like an important piece that I remember why I'm doing things. I'm doing this because I have a body and I want it to move and I want the energy to flow and I want to get rid of all the jams that happen inside of me when things feel chaotic or confusing. Taking your breath brings it all back to the sacred and the sacredness of who you are. So for me, that why is extremely important. I know I talk a lot, but I, there are certain things that just, they mean something to me and I wanna share them with you. That was one of them. So having said all that, let's begin with the breath. Let's start with a three part breath. And what that means is you'll breathe into your stomach, another into your, um, into your belly, and another into your chest, and then release. So a three-part breath goes. Please join me for a few. One more of these. Now take it all together from the very depth of where you're filling that with the three part and fill it with a long, deep one part. With an exhale. And let your breath fill your body up. On our next breath, on our exhale, let's chant the sound of OM together. And let's begin with our arms. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Take your breath with you. Inhale, exhale. One more. And when we get to the bottom of here, 
Let's push it up and out. And push it up and out. Up and out. Mm. One more after this. This is the last one. Up and out. And bring them back. Out and in. And out and in. You can take two more of these. One more, last one. Now, now let's take our hands and just start waving them. Let's open up the open up our wrists and open up our forearms and just kind of then bring them back up. Bring them all the way up and touch them at the top. Bring them back. Let them just free flow this way. Let's just open up those those sockets and get our synovial fluid flowing. All those nerve endings, all those, uh, those sockets, they just welcome these kind of movements. One more. And as we come down, let your arms flow and come into a Tadasana, the mountain pose. Let the energy envelop you. And then come on back to the center with your hands, fold them in together, interlace your fingers and press them out. Bring them away from your shoulders, out in front of your body and stretch that back part out. Take a deep breath. And then bring them up, bring them over your head and look up at your hands. This is the altar pose here. One more deep breath here. And go ahead and drop your arms. And let's go to our shoulders. Let's begin with the up and down. Up and down. Go ahead and scrunch your neck in while you're doing it. Let's get this nice flexible movement going. One more. All right. Now let's go in and out with our shoulders. In and out. Do a couple more. Last one and out. Let's take our hands, bring them together, fold your fingers together, and let's take a few of these shoulder swings and just lift your elbow up Bring it back, up and back, and up and back. Let's take one more of these and come on back to the center. And let's take our shoulder rolls. Let's begin rolling our shoulders back. Take a few of these because it feels so good. Hmm. One more after this. This will be the very last one on this side. And reverse your direction and go forward. We're opening up all those shoulder pockets and all of our neck connections there. One more and come to a beginning. Let's begin by taking our arms and taking them back and forth from side to side, starting to get that twisting motion. Your spine loves these kind of moves. One more to this side. All right, now we're gonna do the spinal twist and instead of putting them out or in, I, I know I keep giving you different ways to do this, but that's because I'd like you to pick your favorite. This one is the one I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to take my hand, put it on my hip, towards the back. Now, in this particular instance, I'm gonna keep my eyes focused on a particular drushki or a focus of some type. And so I'm gonna choose the computer. Um, I'm gonna keep my head 
I'm going to keep my head even, my eyes focused, and I'm going to make sure that all of the twisting is from these sections. And then my head really doesn't get involved. And to do that, I'm going to keep my head thinking happy thoughts so that it feels grateful just to be where it is. So take a deep breath and turn. Deep breath and turn. One more breath and turn. And then come on back to the center. Go to the other side. Put my arm back. Focusing the front, looking at one spot, taking a deep breath, and turning. One more. And then let it go and come back to the center. And let's take our side bends. So we're going to take up. And to the side. I'm just going to take a few lazy ones like this. Start working those side panels so that we know they're awake. And the next time the left arm comes up, bring it up and over. And take a deep breath in. Look under your armpit. Keep a straight spine. Feel the energy. And bend even deeper. One more breath. And come on back up to the other side, dropping this arm, raising this one, now sitting up straight, feeling that energy. Really notice from your toes up what's going on with your body. Take a deep breath in and bend, keeping your heart very open. Take two more really deep breaths. Then come on back down. And let's take a few of our goddess circles. Make sure you're, that your feet are hips width apart. You're sitting on the edge of your chair. Put your hands on your knees and then come to the front. This is a rib motion and a chest. Come to the side and a back to the side and to the front. So you get it. Where it's different than the, um, than the shoulder shrugs is that we're including our entire torso and we're using our core to do this particular posture. Well, if I'm going a little slow for you, it's because I have trouble talking and doing. So let's go the other direction. Let's take one more of these, make it count. Oh yeah, and come on back. I'm sitting here and my head says, oh wait, you forgot to do me after the shoulder. So let's take a few minutes and check our neck out. Let's make sure it's still very flexible. Take a few of our, our infinity circles which is a side word eight, an eight on its side, if you're not familiar with the term. Let's take a few more of these. How does your neck feel? Bring it to center, few nose. Stop, few yeses. And stop. And let's take the time now to lift our chin all the way up, all the way back. Make sure your posture is straight, your shoulders are down, your chin is up, and breathe. And see what you've done. You've opened every part of your body from your chin, which is your throat chakra, your heart chakra. Um, oh gosh. Anyway, we're opening exactly from here all the way down, our solar plexus, all the way down. And feel that. Feel the openness. 
And then gently bring your chin down to your sternum and let it hang against your chest, tucking your chin and feel the weight. One more really deep breath here. And then come on back up. Now just to be sure what I'd like us to do is take our neck, turn it halfway so that you're looking basically toward your armpit and then take your chin and bring it down. Let's stretch the side of our neck. One more breath here. And use your hands gently to support your face. Take a deep breath in and bring it to the other side with your chin pointing towards your armpit and let it stretch. Take a couple of deep breaths, give it time. One more breath. And gently use your hand and come back to the center. Hmm. Okay, that felt good. How about if we take our foot, bring it over our knee, and let's open up our glutes and our hips by just doing a few sideward motions. And then bring it back to the center. Now take your heel, because it's going to be your heel drawing this. Draw a circle. And just use your foot and your leg and your hip and flow with that circle. Now stop, go the other way. You can see how this opens up your hip as well. And stop, bring your foot around, make a little sleeve with your hands, sit up straight, foot straight out. Point and flex and point and flex. Two more. And then take the circular rotation at your ankles, sitting up straight. Go the other way. And then let your leg dangle and come down to the floor. So bring your other leg up, put it over your knee. Take your hand, you're gonna use your hand on your foot and your knee to direct your hips and your glutes. Everything that's your lower body is impacted by this actually. Okay, now take your heel. And we're gonna draw circles. You can draw little circles if you have trouble or you can draw big circles if you're capable. It doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing. It's just a matter of your temperament. And then go the opposite direction. And take your leg, bring it out, put your hands under it to hold it, bring it straight out, and point and flex, point and flex. Two more. Don't forget to sit up straight though. Okay, then we're gonna circle our ankles. Back the other direction. Bring your leg, let it limp, and then bring it down to the ground. Okay, let's do our goddess squat. Take your heels, bring them as wide as your chair legs with your heels pointed in, your toes pointed out. Bring them fairly close to those legs so that you can sit on the edge of the chair and feel the stretch that it brings. And use your hands and gently just Gently massage and push your legs out a little bit more than you would if you were just sitting like this. Go ahead and take it and go for the stretch. And feel it 
especially in these upper thighs. That's where I'm really feeling it. Once you get the feet right, then take the hands and bring them up. Okay, now remember, we are essentially our, our body, our torso is our hips are all right here. We're sitting up straight as can be right over our hips, our body, our upper body is over our hips. So we're gonna bring our hands out and bring our arms back so that we're like basically touching our, our um, the back of our shoulder blades or are trying to touch anyway. And then take a deep breath because as you bring these back and you spread these out, you've got a really good body awareness going on. Take a few deep breaths. Two more. Don't let your body slip now. Keep it in its posture. One more deep breath. And you can let your arms go. You can bring your feet in and we can take a bridge. So take your feet, make sure that your, your ankles are, and make sure that your knees are over your ankles. You're sitting up straight and let's take a few pelvic tilts to begin with. We'll take three. One, two, three. Now on the next one, Raise yourself all the way up as much as you can, putting your head down, put an arch in your body and believe you're a bridge. You're anchoring on both ends. Your body would support somebody, a little troll maybe walking up and over it to get to the other side. One more deep breath and come on back down. While we're here, let's take our <clears throat> up and out and up and down. A joint opener. A couple more of these just because they feel so good. Okay, last one, come on down. Let your arms just kind of dangle and let's take it to dasana with that energy. Get all that energy going, channel it into your being and sit with the strength and the structure of the solidity of the mountain pose. Now take all of that energy and let's go to the side of our chair we're gonna do some lunges and just uh, what I'd like us to do, sit on the side of your chair on the edge, take the back. Okay, the lunge is a forward facing position. So you're coming off to the side. Your toe is, uh, you're up on your tiptoes. Your leg is straight, your other leg is bent and you come out into the lunge. You're lunging towards something. This is the energetics. Take a couple of breaths and really pull towards something and push with the back foot. Now take a high crescent lunges when you bring your arms back up and your chest up. Take a couple of breaths here. Keeping your legs straight. One more breath. And then come on back down and let's move to the other side. Come to the other side, sit on. See, I'm actually sitting on the edge of my chair, pointing in this direction. Front leg is bent, back leg is stretched as far as it can go. On my tippy toes, I reach out and lunging, pushing with the back foot, pulling with the front. And I'm breathing. On your next breath in, come on and pull it up and do the high crescent lunge. Two more breaths here. 
and bring your arms back down and come to the front. And let's stand up. Okay. I am going to do a couple of the um, downward facing dogs because I wanted to show you one more time today how to get up if you fall down or if you just end up on the floor. I thought it was worth showing you one more time in case you missed it last time. We'll do that after the downward facing dogs. So come to your chair, spread your fingers and your thumb, get firmly on the chair, step back flat-footed until you can't be flat-footed anymore. That's the right distance. Then put your head between your arms, drop your shoulders, raise your rear end and straighten your legs and breathe. Now your head doesn't go any further than your shoulders go. So we don't have any dangling neck there. Two more breaths. Full body stretch, that's what this does. Now come on back up and let's take our plank. Coming forward, a bunch of toes. Our hands are in the same place. Our head comes up and we look forward. Tucking our rear ends. One more deep breath. And come on back up. And just for the heck of it, take one more downward facing dog. The feet are hips width apart. Your hands are in the same place as you started. Drop your head, drop your shoulders. Lift your rear end and straighten your legs. And breathe. Come up, just loosen up a little, spread your legs. All right, we're gonna take the downward facing dog from the wide legged position. So your head comes between your arms, your shoulders drop, your rear end goes up and your legs straighten, keeping some real flexibility in your knees. You don't wanna lock them out and you wanna breathe deeply. Okay, now this is something I really like to do. Take your hands and drop them to the floor. Walk back as far as you can and walk forward again as far as you can and just stretch out. Walk back one more time. Now try this with me. Just try this with me this one time. Come on down, come down to the floor you're on the floor and you say, how am I going to get up? Let me try the chair. Oh, that's not working really well. Let someone else help me. Oh, let me push myself. That's not working very well. Here's a way that works. Take your knees, slide them under you. Come to, come to this kind of a position. Now take your hands and make them into fists. Tuck your toes. Walk your fists back up to your knees. This will force your body automatically push with your upper body weight and stand up. Ta -da. It works every time. I hope you've taken the opportunity to try it with me. Now, before we do go back to our seating position, uh, let's take a balance pose. Um, I think in this case, what I'd like to do for a balance pose is to, for us to take our, um, oh gosh, I've forgotten the name of the body part, but bring up your leg, do a stretch on your quad, pulling it to the back. And then just, if you'd like to give it a little bit more of a stretch, reach your hand down to your chair and just pick it up. If you can, come on back up and bring it down. 
Come on to the other side. Let's, let's do the quad stretch. Pick up your foot, hold on to your chair. Your leg is directly in back of you. You're hanging on to your ankle, feeling that stretch. Now, if you'd like, you can come down a little, bringing the leg up a little higher and just feel how that feels. And then bring your leg back down and set it down. And let's take some um, up and down with our heels. And let's just make sure that our calves and our ankles feel good. Two more here. And then come on back down and sit down. Sitting on the edge of your chair. Let's begin. Let's begin with our lion's breath. Remember, put your hands on your on your knees, your feet are hips width apart. This is the lion's pose. Please do it with me. Take a deep breath in. Come on, let's take a few. Get all that energy out of you. If you have frustration, get it out. King of the jungle. One more. And go into a Tadasana to feel the energy. Let it flow throughout your body. Feel the tingling in the fingers, in your toes, in your head. I'm, I'm like zinging with energy. This pose does that. And come back to center. And let's work with our hands. Now these poses, you can sit back a little bit further if you'd like. Um, it helps if you can keep your back erect, erect though, so that um, your spine Stay straight. So bring your hands together. Take our fingertips. Join them with each hand. And let's do a spider doing push-ups on the mirror. So collapse and expand. And collapse and expand. Let's take a couple more of these. If you're using pushing on both sides, like you'll, I feel this a lot in my fingers. One more of these. And then just release your hands and just give them a little bit of a shake. And let's take our fingers and let's start with the tips. Thumb to pinky, thumb to ring finger, thumb to index, no, point your finger, no. Well, you get the point. <laughs> I'm out. Okay, then we're going to go. Back on the second, see, you know, you the nub of your finger, that's the joint. Take your thumb and put it there on each of your fingers. And do it the opposite direction. And then come on down to the pads of your fingers and move your thumbs across those so that you get a really good thumb stretch. And let your hands out and then rotate your hands clockwise position or any, any way you'd like. Make sure that your hands get enough rotation that you get the kinks out of your wrists. And then just because it's fun, take your hands, bring your pinkies together like you're holding something really nice in the lotus flower. Then take it to the back and bring it up. Take it to the back and bring it up. And bring it up. And now come on back down, rotating your hands and your wrists, touching each time. And one more thing, let's take our arms and bring them up and take a, take a tricep stretch. Bring, bring your, your palms to your elbows, opposite elbows, and sit up straight. 
head between your head between your arms and breathe. One more breath. Feel that stretch all the way up the side of your body. And then release your arms and come on back down. Um, I think we have time for one more thing if we make it the eagle. So let's take our leg. Let's do the legs first. Take your right leg, bring it over. Now remember, if you can't bring your leg over your knees, you, it's okay to do it from the lower position. You can bring it up, but you can't bring it in back and you can't tuck it. It's okay to do it from this position. Just keep your foot as close to your leg, your other leg, as you can. Or if you've got the flexibility, some days I do, some days I don't, bring it all the way back. Whatever leg is on top, take that arm to be the top arm and bring it, bring the other arm under it, bring your hands together. You'll notice a little peep hole out, out your arms. This is the space that I'd like you to look through. This is the eagle perspective. This is how you focus, you pinpoint, you narrow your gaze and take in it all. Now let's take a deep breath and turn to the right. Another deep breath. And come on back to the center and turn to the left. Noticing what you see out of your people, out of your area of perspective. And come on back down and release your arms and release your leg. Take your other leg, do the same thing from whatever position you could do it from. Whatever arm, whatever leg is on top, put that arm on the top and the other arm under it and come up with your hands touching in the touching, hopefully your palms are touching, and then you've got your space in between again. Use that perspective to pinpoint your attention. See what you see from this viewpoint, and then turn to the left, turn to the right, and notice what you see. Back to the center, go the other direction. Come back to center, release your arms, Release your leg. Mm. Oh, and now it's time for us to start coming back and slowing down and turning inward for our Shavasana meditative pose that I will say, let's take a few deep breaths in and then let's just let them go. You know how to relax, close your eyes and breathe and let go of all of the internal conversation. If you find conversation going in your brain or your body, just say that's nice dear and breathe into it and let it go. So let's try that. I'll tell you when it's time to come back. So deep breath, eyes closed, quiet. And gently start taking a deeper breath. And as you bring the energy up 
into your focus. See what part of your body might need to move in microbursts or what needs to stretch or what needs to lengthen. Whatever you need to do now to bring yourself into the space of dealing with others and absorbing the energy you've done today and the work you've done, then let's do that. Take your time, lift your legs up and down. Maybe you want a little bit of a stretch. Oh. Oh. Mm. And then when we're all said and done, let's come back and let's do our own to end this practice for the day. So take a deep breath in and out. The next one, let's chant the own. Deep breath in. And bring our hands together in the prayer position. Let's thank our true teacher in every single one of us. And let's bow our heads and remember that our bodies are also sacred and holy. And if we can consider them in that, in that language, we'll be a lot kinder to ourselves and to others. Because however we treat ourselves is how we treat others. So if you can learn to treat yourself in a holy, sacred way, you'll do well with others as well, I promise. So thank you for coming and listening to me again. I appreciate you being here. Namaste.